Hello everyone, welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2, Super Mini Mail Call, and let's get right into it. This is a package here from Jeffrey in York, Pennsylvania. So Jeffrey had reached out to me when he saw me using my Sencor VG91. That's the RF piece of gear I have that generates test signals when I work on those old TV sets. He saw me using it with a bunch of little adapters and an RCA cable, and it was all very sketchy. He said one of the problems is it's easy to break off the connector when you have a bunch of adapters plugged in because it really extends the connection out quite far. So there's a lot of leverage on that front panel. So he ended up making me some cables. So this one here is BNC to RCA. And this one here is an F connector to BNC. So this is really good. This is specifically what I would need to use if I was using that VG91. In fact, I would use it... Where is that exactly? Hmm, I've sort of misplaced my cables. But this BNC would plug into the front of the VG91. And then this is an F connector. We have a ballon here. So this converts from 75 ohm to 300 ohm. So this would go on like so. And then on the back of the old TV I was working on, you would connect up these connections here. And uh, that would be a nice, solid, good connection to the back of the TV without a bunch of sketchy adapters. And uh, in fact, yeah, he sent me two. He sent me another one here that's also RCA to F connector, which is just amazing. I actually have some of this 75 ohm cable, like a big spool of it. But the thing that would be hard for me to do is, uh, well, while it's easy to put these F connectors on, because I have a little crimp tool for that and a, a wire stripper, connecting RCA cables to this type of cable, which is, See if I can figure out what kind it is. Usually RG59 or is it RG60 or RG6? The cable he used says Comscope Inc. Express Cable TV 18 AWG 184 feet. So I'm not quite sure. I, I thought <laughs> I'm forgetting all my terminology. Is it RG59 or RG6 that's typically used for cable TV? Either way, Whatever it is, it's a thick coaxial cable and it is hard to connect RCA jacks to it. So this is the really special part. It looks like he uses a crimp tool to do that. See that little blue part in there? And also, of course, connecting these types of BNC to this type of coax is not something you can do without a special tool as well. So this is really awesome. Uh, I'll definitely be using these next time I'm doing any testing with an old TV. And I actually have an old little TV with some tubes in there that will require some testing. So these cables will be pulled out for that. So thank you very much, Jeffrey. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's very nice of you to send these in to the basement. All right, I know for super mini mail calls, I usually just do one package, but since this was a quickie with this one from Jeffrey, why don't we do another one here? This one here comes from Jonathan in Chicago, Illinois. Let's see what we got in here. I have a letter and that is it. The letter reads, even with a high speed continuity tester, it's often hard to map out traces. I've included something like a conductor brush with a multimeter lead. I hope you find it useful. P.S. I included titanium tweezers because solder will not stick to them. And I haven't seen any in your videos. All right. Well, let's see. Let's start with these tweezers. Yeah, you know, the ones I have are all pretty junky. Well, these are pretty slick looking. Look at that. Wow. They feel like... Wow, like I guess the fact that it's titanium, <laughs> it's so light, it feels like it's almost fake. So that's pretty awesome. They look really, really schmick, I think, as uh, some other YouTubers say. These are the ones I'm always using, and they are like, I don't know, you know, stuff from China or whatever, ESD14. They're not bad, they're really cheap. Um, it's very easy to bend the tips on tweezers, right, that are very fine point like this. So it's also good to have extras. I know I've also bent up tips on some of these already, and I think I've tossed them out. Once the tips get bent, if you try to pick up little tiny SMD parts, it's very difficult to keep dropping them or they ping off into the distance or whatever. So some really slick titanium ones. Look at that, it says titanium one right there. Yeah. They just feel really interesting. And so that is pretty sweet. Let's check out this, I think, what did he call it? 
high speed, uh, something like a conductive brush with a multimeter leaves. I guess I don't even know what that. <gasps> oh, well, would you look at that? So you'd plug this into your multimeter or whatever. And um, obviously these little, it's a con like a conductive brush. So what exactly would be the point of this? Hard to map out traces. I've included something like a conductive brush. Okay, I get it. Oh, I'm, I'm totally digging this. Let me grab something and we can test with. Okay, how about this? Uh, how about this saying, what kind of video card is it? It's an ET4000. Um, I wrote fast on here, by the way, because uh, these are really fast. So I'll get that and let's get the multimeter here. I think I understand the use case here. So I'll switch this over to beep beep mode. Beep beep, there we go. Let's get rid of one of these probes. We're just gonna need one of them. We're gonna plug this brush probe in. I have, I'm, I'm loving the idea of what this is and I think it's gonna work the way I think. So we'll plug that in to the multimeter. So now, okay, there we go. So imagine we want to figure out like where one of the pins from this, I don't know, let's pick uh, this chip right here. This it's an HCT 244 or I'll, I'll do one of these ones here. So I'll do, oops. So I'll do that pin right there. Okay, it keeps falling off. And I guess we can like kind of brush along chips and stuff here. And you just sort of go around the board trying to figure out where that, that pin goes. You know, I don't even know if that goes to anything. So maybe I should pick, why don't we pick a trace here? We'll pick one of these traces on the PCB like that. And kind of see it goes up into this area. So let's see. I'm certainly not having any luck. <laughs> My demonstration of this thing isn't so great. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so that it, so this trace looks like it goes over here, but it actually ends up over here on the uh, main surface mount IC, the same whatever this video processor is here. So clearly you can't really figure out um, <laughs> precise where this is. So now I would obviously unplug that, switch back to the regular probe, and I'd be able to figure out where that pin goes. But it is, that's really handy because I, you know, I was cons really thought it went over to one of the ROM chips over here, but nope, goes there. Let's try something else. Let's try one of these over here. So I think these would also go to this chip here, I would imagine. Nope, nope, maybe not. Well, okay, it looks like it goes to this resistor here. Yep, four ohms, so that's pretty cool. Let's try this one over here. Let's see where this goes to go. Oh, it ends up on that chip there. That is sweet. Okay, and we go one of these RAM chips here. Sorry, I'm kind of out of frame. One of these RAM chips this is obviously gonna go over to here. I think. There we go, down on that section. That rocks, that totally, totally rocks. So thank you very much, Jonathan, for sending that in. That, I'm, I'm kind of speechless. I, I've never heard of this. I mean, it's, it makes total sense. Like, why wouldn't I want to use something like this? But how freaking awesome. And I guess if you want to make one, you just take a regular multimeter probe and attach this metal soft bristle brush to it and <laughs> there you go. So that's cool. And also, yes, thank you very much for the titanium tweezers. Rock on, thank you very much. All right, let's keep the train going. Uh, this one comes from Garth in Scotts Valley, California. And unfortunately I accidentally opened this one already. I didn't look inside. So um, that's why I'm not cutting it open. Uh, there's a letter here and what looks like a t-shirt. Let's see what the note says here. Thanks so much for all the videos, Garth. And he said at the bottom, 
I hate this horrible printer. I should have used an image writer too. <laughs> What's kind of funny is, uh, I think I've talked about this on the channel. I hate image writer twos. I had one as a kid and that printer just gave me so much grief. It was always jamming. I was really, really not happy with it. So it's sort of a joke where people are like, oh, would you like an image writer two? And I'm like, no, I do not want an image writer two. I don't, I don't mind uh, uh, dot matrix printers. I was gonna say inkjet. I don't mind dot matrix printers, but for some reason it's the image writer that really bugs me. I, yeah. So I think I have like an Epson printer and I think I have a Star Micronics and they work pretty reliably and they're old and they're, they're easy to get the, the ribbons for and stuff, but Apple image writer printers, no, no, no. It's probably just the fact that when I was a kid and I hated that printer, that's why I don't like it. And maybe it's a good printer. I mean, they're probably very well made and whatever. I had an image writer one and an image writer two, and I really didn't like either of them. Okay, what's this? Oh, look at this. Nice. Um, I'll try to get this in frame. It's an Apple II shirt. And <laughs> it's sort of the, uh, the distressed look on the Apple logo there. And um, this next level fitted crew, black, large. Yes, thank you very much. I do wear large t-shirts. Definitely put on some COVID pounds during a pandemic. Boy, this sticker is really, really hard to get off. Let's see if I can get it from the corner. There we go. Definitely put on a little bit of pounds from the, uh, from the pandemic. I used to wear mediums. And if I'm honestly only wearing like just a t-shirt, like if it's in the summer, then medium sometimes fits. But the problem is you wash them and then they shrink and I never know if it's gonna work or not. So I like to stick to the largest and that way in the winter I can layer because I like to wear uh, layers and t-shirts on top of long sleeves and stuff like that. So yeah, well, that's really cool. Thank you very much, Garth, for uh, the Apple II shirt. I think people will be seeing this on the channel. Definitely a fan of the old Apple II. So yeah, thanks very much. So I think I'm gonna end this super mini mail call here. So thank you very much, Jonathan, for sending in the titanium tweezers and this awesome probe. And then thank you very much, Jeffrey, for the handmade coax cables. Really sweet of you. And also Garth, thanks for the t-shirt. So if you enjoyed this video, you know, thumbs up, all the usual youtube -y stuff. Thanks to my patrons, our names are scrolling up the side. If you haven't subscribed to this uh, second channel, I really would appreciate it if you did. Those subscribes really, really help spread the, what's the word, like, get the channel out there, so to speak. It's kind of interesting how the main channel, which has a lot more subscribers than the second channel, the exposure of the channel is, or the two channels are very different. And the amount of views the videos get and stuff like that, even though it's, it's me on both of them. But I guess there's a little bit of a difference between the way I make the videos. Maybe people don't like the second channel ones as much, but anyhow, that is gonna be it. So stay healthy, stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye.